permeable, faster than a speeding cauliflower, more powerful than a shot of wheatgrass. This is my brother from another mother, David Moore, and and uh, just wanted to, before I sorry, he, David's been a vegetarian. Actually, David gave Gandhi his first shot of wheatgrass. <laughs> He's been a vegetarian since you know since we began telling time. And one of the things, one of the noteworthy, one of the very noteworthy things about this restaurant is Dave will spare no expense in keeping everything clean and pure, up to and including his packaging and uh, his water. Everything in this restaurant is like squeaky clean. And um, he's, he was one of the most committed people I know to sharing uh, his knowledge and wisdom about eating and health and, and well-being. What we're gonna do today, well, you can hear me better, right? What we're gonna do to today is make a Buddha bowl. It's one of the more uh, popular items on the menu. Uh, Jill and Frank both love this dish, and it's really easy to make. Um, when you look at the list of ingredients and I, you look at the recipe for it, it's daunting. But when you watch somebody do it, you go, oh yeah, I, I got it now, I can do this. So watch what we do, and you'll be able to do this in your own kitchen. Now, we're doing this today with acorn squash, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and shishito peppers with a nice quinoa base and a nice sauce over the top. But you can do this with any vegetables you've got in your refrigerator. Do it with, um, you can do it with plantain and apples and carrots and uh, uh, whatever you have around, you can put in the bowl with a nice, uh, broil it really nicely and a nice sauce over the top and it's gonna be great. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, Frank, I need you to cut this up for me. Okay. We want it to be in pieces that end up being about an inch or two. Have you done this one before? I've cut a cauliflower. Show me what you want. Okay. Frank, you can use a pepper. There's a pine nose here. You can just pull it out. You can just break off. We don't need about that much. You know, this always looks like a brain. It is a brain. It's brain food. No, it is brain food, I guess. Yeah. And so now what you want to do is you want to put these in kind of bite-sized pieces. Got and it. So what I would do is something like that. Okay, more of the stems, okay. But it's not an exact science. This is God's creature. Yeah, here. yeah. So you kind of ask it. Well, you know, God's creature's cutting it, too. That's right. <laughs> so what you want to do... You know, we are the cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to ask it, how do you want to express today? And then it'll tell you, okay. and there's where you want to be. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to do the acorn squash. Is that all right with you guys? Mm-hmm. Hey, can I talk about something, Frank, here that's kind of near and dear to my heart? Please. One of the things that's going on right now, you know, we're under a pandemic here in our country, and it's actually worldwide, of course, and oh, it's people are wondering about their food security. And you go to the store, you buy an acorn squash, you pull the seeds out of it, and each one of these seeds makes another acorn squash, right? right. No, it makes a whole plant that's got eight or 12 or 15 acorn squashes. Each one of these, look, there's like 100 seeds in here, I've got like six or eight hundred acorn squash. Wow. All I gotta do is put them in the ground, germinate them, put them in my backyard, or even put them on my windowsill at home, and I'll have eight or ten of these going and get them all year long, and it ends up being for free. And and, and, it's, a, and, you, and it's not a new concept. People did that in World War II, the Victory Garden. In right. perpetuity, these go on forever. This goes on forever. This is the best investment you can possibly make in your own health. This is unbelievable. But you can only do this with acorn squash, right, Frank? Oh, no. No, exactly. But no. wait, but wait, order these acorn squash. No, you can do it with tomatoes, <laughs> right? You know, there's peppers. Absolutely. You can do this with all these foods that have these seeds in them. Strawberries. You know, but it's going to upset Monsanto. We're going to really. Don't you. get me going, Frank. Please don't get me going. <laughs> so let's do a little bit of a. Um, a flavoring for the cauliflower. And again, it's whatever's in your cabinet. Today I looked around and I had a little bit of cumin. And so for that much cauliflower, we need about that much cumin. You need another spoon? I'm good. What are you talking about? Nice. A little salt and pepper. Oh, look, I found turmeric. That's nice too. And all of these things have curative properties in them. The turmeric, has, it's great for anti-inflammatory issues, um, and you, know, you just want to expand on the other. Black pepper actually also triggers a curcumin in the turmeric, and so you want to always pair turmeric with black pepper, which you saw me doing in there as well. 
And then the cumin gives it just a nice balanced flavor as well. Also, great antioxidant food. I need antioxidant food. I think we're good there. And then you just give it a little toss. And see now all your all your turmeric has got a nice coating on it. Now if you want to, you can put a little coconut oil on this. It's the only oil that we cook with here because it won't become carcinogenic when you cook it. All the other oils eventually will. Also, you, it has a the, you can uh, you can get it hotter than other oils. Yeah, it's too. got exactly. So you can get it super hot. I'm going to put this oven in the oven at 350, but you can crank your oven at the 450 or something like that. To get fine. Um, what should we do with this one here, Frank? I'm thinking again. We'll use salt and pepper. Yeah. You know what might be nice? It's just a little maple syrup ah, to bring yes. the, to get the sweetener out. Now I'm going to use my hands. Well, I, I guess we can toss this one too. Just toss this stuff in a bowl. Now I wash this acorn squash before I cut it, so that when you bake this now, you've got a nice maple syrupy glaze over the top, and the skin is going to be edible as well. Which which was surprising to me when we had. Uh, when I first had this, it never occurred to me to eat the skin. And the skin was like my favorite part. Okay. Now again, on Brussels sprouts, it's one of my favorite vegetables. And Is that going in people, here? Yeah. But we're gonna, we're gonna toss, oh, you know what? We're gonna toss this just a little bit of coconut oil. Okay. That's funny right there. Um, with Brussels sprouts, I see people do this a lot. It breaks, it boggles my mind. With Brussels, you don't need to um, you don't need to wash them again after you've cut them. It would be kind of like washing a banana after you peeled it with a Brussels sprout. Some of the some of the leaves will kind of fall off, and that's all you need to do. So you just throw those in the bowl. Again, a little salt and pepper. This is Himalayan salt. We got that from Pakistan before we opened up here. A little coconut oil. And again, just give it a little toss. With these, you want them face down. You want the, the big end down. And you'll see when we bake these here how nice they get when they're down like that. These are really, they look like small cabbages. They're a little really bigger big. than average, I'll be honest with you. They're a little bigger than normal. Now we're gonna pop this in the oven and while it's cooking, we're gonna make the sauce for this, okay? Okay. So it's gonna be right behind here. We put the wild rice in the uh, steamer, right? Right. So we're steaming our wild rice. A few people at home, basmati rice, wild rice, uh, quinoa is fabulous for this dish. You want to get some black rice, whatever you have, again, on hand. Uh, it's a great dish just with quinoa. Um, what else can you use? Barley, if you want to go that direction. Put a nice grain underneath it. And let's come up with a, a sauce. This. We're going to use a little bit of almond butter. This is something my son-in-law makes at Chocolate Tree in Sedona. So shout out to them. Kelly's been doing this for about 20 years. This stuff is amazing. A little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of garlic, a little tahini. Again, stone ground sesame seeds make tahini. You can get it at the store if you want to, or you go to Chocolate Tree and get it stone ground from them there. Uh, Chocolate Tree is uh, another uh, vegetarian restaurant in Sedona, which uh, David uh, cooperated with his daughter. She's still there. Uh, David came to Phoenix and opened up another restaurant. So, uh, so I'm just going to give this a little smudge here. And if you um, look at the ingredients, this is going to be similar to what you would call, what would this be like? Like a Thai peanut sauce is what we're doing here because the seasoning ingredients are lemon juice, garlic, ginger, and a little bit of uh, red hot chili pepper. Give a little bit of a kick. What's that? I had ginger juice that I called lemon juice. I put that in there and now I just actually put the lemon juice in. So now we're good to go. And then what you want to do is give it a good mix. You can do this in your Vitamix if you want to. You can do it with an immersion blender. You can even whisk it. And when it gets to this position here, you add a little bit of water to get the consistency that you want in your home free. Now 
Now, Frank. Yes. Tell the folks a story. I'm going to go get us some water. Be right back. There once was a man from there in Tucker. Out of the Instapot, and there it is. Can I tell you something about wild rice, Frank? Please. It's not wild. Tell our friends at home. The wild rice that you're buying in the grocery store is not wild. I guarantee it. <laughs> he, on the other hand, is a wild mofo. <laughs> Listen, this, however, is authentic wild rice. Think about it. Wild rice, then why do they take it and plant it in straight rows in a nice big field? It's not wild, is it? No, it sounds very Protestant. It's, domes <laughs> it's domesticated, all right? This is wild rice. This is from Moose Lake Rice Company up in northern Minnesota. Here's what they do, Frank. They get in canoes and they paddle out on lakes in northern Minnesota. They use a scythe and they harvest this rice by hand. This is wild rice and the taste is amazing. See how it's kind of curly here? You can kind of see it's, it's not straight, it's kind of curly. This is an amazing rice. There are over 6,000 different varieties of rice in the world, and we know about three or four of them. We think basmati is exotic, but this is the real deal right here. You know why they think basmati is exotic? In South Italian? It's got a lot of vowels. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, so after you've baked your acorn squash for about 20 minutes, it's going to look like this. Cauliflower is going to have a nice brown edge to it like that. It looks like it's even a little overcooked, but when you cook Brussels sprouts like that, what ends up happening is the sugars explode out of them, and this is how you get your flavor on these things. I can't stand it when I go into a place and order Brussels sprouts, and they're hard and crunchy. They haven't cooked them enough. That's a good look right there. This is what your cauliflower is going to look like when you're through baking it. Yeah, you can see the, the turmeric is really... It's really beautiful, really isn't beautiful, it? Beautiful, yeah. That's the other thing about this food. You know, like it's it's nice to look at. Sometimes he would bring me a dish, and I felt bad about. You know, I felt like I was violating something. I didn't want to. I didn't want to eat it. It just looked so nice. Speaking of violating, put a little sauce on this now. Should we just eat it, or do you want to make it look pretty? Well, we can, why can't we do both? Okay, let's make it look that's pretty. What I, that's what you do, right? Let's make it look pretty. These are called popcorn shoots. They're actually sweet corn sprouts. And this is how we serve it in the restaurant. You know what I think? What's that? I think that um, one of us should take the camera and serve Jill. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. And she's saying no, which makes me want to do oh, wait, it more. I, well, let's wait, do it. Yeah. I do okay, want you're, out, you're uh, overwhelmingly outvoted here. <laughs> All right. So All right. grab the point yeah. of carrying the bowl. Now that's what I call a Buddha bowl. Ah, uh, how about this lady right here? She seems remarkably think, ready for yeah. the meal. May we serve you? Yes, please. All right. Okay. Now it's not finger food, so let's get a nice let's get her, uh, over there. Set up and can I get one of those? Oh, you gotta get closer to that. Get in there. What do you have there, Jill? I have a Buddha ball. Thank, Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Come, on, come on around the side so we can see who's serving your Rose. Yes. Thank you, Rose. Delicious. Appreciate you. And nutritious. Yay. Thank you. It's hot. Hot? Mm, so good. Is my it really? favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah. So if you're ever in Phoenix, uh, come to uh, the Giving Tree, we'll give you the address, and uh, if you're in Sedona, uh, head over to the Chocolate Tree. If you have any questions or answers, by all means, get in touch with us. And, thank you, uh, Frank. David, thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. Let's do this again. This is fun, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it tomorrow. You want to? Yeah, sure. I, get I a, think we should do it in Bali. I get a vegan, gluten-free meatball and sausage sandwich I want to try out on you, Frank. Not all.